Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy Elliott. Today in this podcast, I'm with my man Shannon right now. Number one, he's he's a killer in jiu-jitsu and he's a savage. So we're gonna talk about like some things that Shannon knows that is super cool, but he, he crushes it and kills it in business. His story, I promise you, if you listen consciously, it's going to change a lot of your lives, okay? So guys, get ready to meet Shannon. I promise you the stories he's gonna tell you today and how he's gotten to where he's gotten is mind blowing and it's gonna help you get to the next level in your life. Check it out. Yeah, I'm a train hard, mistakes turn into learned scars. To build a brickyard, it's one by one, each bar. So build it tall, build it All right, guys, here we go. So obviously we're on the one percenter podcast. Why do we call it that? Because it's about being a one percenter, okay? You got a hundred people in a room, 99 people aren't doing anything. One person's crushing and killing it. By the way, we believe that that's you. So the information that we're going to give today is going to change your life. I don't believe that information is what you need to go to the next level. Um, it is transformation. But this guy is going to tell you about how he's transformed his life. And, I, and I'm an underdog, guys. If anybody follows me, you guys know that I love... Um, an underdog story. I love people that come back. I love the people. I love people that grind, that have core values, that that are that are badasses in life. That you know, that just they, they they don't fall prey to weakness. And uh, and this guy right here, Shannon, he's my brother, and uh, he's he's kicking ass. And you know, we've done a lot of coaching together and cool stuff. But as I've gotten to know his story, man, him and his wife are super close. He's a great dad. He's a great leader to others. Um, he kicks ass, makes a lot of money. But you know what he really does? He's really just an exciting dude who's fired up, who today I said, man, why don't you share your story with some of our people? And maybe you guys can decide like, hey, what's the next story in your life, right? I know that he's just getting started in his journey, but up to this point, it's crazy. So Shannon, I'm glad you're here with us. We're in Scottsdale, Arizona. We're in the One Percenter podcast room. And I want Shannon to go ahead and start like, like number one, where are you from? How old are you right now? And then let's just start breaking into some life lessons, some stuff you've gone through so um, everybody can get ready to grow. I'm 42 years old. I uh, was born in Anchorage, Alaska. I grew up in Virginia Beach, some places in between. I left Virginia when I was about 19, 20-ish years old, and I lived in Washington State, Seattle area, pretty much since then. Cool. So growing up, how many brothers and sisters you got? One sister, little sister. Okay, one sister. Mom and dad still together? No. My, my biological father abandoned me when I was five. Okay, so watch this. So number one, he said his dad left when he was five. Now watch this. My mom left when I was two. If you'll notice something, this guy's full of love. I mean, I always see him full of love, full of passion. What I've seen, at least from my experience, is what you don't have when you're a kid, you try to give to others as an adult. Does that make sense? That's correct. Okay. People that have it easy as a kid always self-sabotage as adults. It's like, you know, if they've had a titty in their mouth their whole life growing up, it's like once they get older, then what happens is, they just fall apart and they self-sabotage. But people that have like had not had a lot of love when they're younger, when they get older, what happens is that disappointment builds them into being a killer and they crush it in business, but also, also they're super loving to people and they want to give people what they didn't have as a kid. So I've seen the way that you are. I've seen the way you carry yourself with lots of energy and love. So dad rolled out when you're young. Obviously, it sounds like you grew up with your sister. Okay. You, you moved to Virginia Beach. Is that right? Yeah. When I was seven, I made it to Virginia Beach. My, my mother... When, when my dad abandoned me and she was basically ejected from his life as well before he abandoned me, she went to Virginia where she grew up and got a job, got her shit together, met somebody. And then, you know, two years after my dad left, my grandmother, who I was staying with, said, hey, are you ready to go see your mom? And yeah, 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 you know. And so at seven years old, I make it to Virginia and I see my mom and I meet. Kelvin, who is my dad, he's the one who raised me, good. and he's still with me today. He's your dad. He's my dad. Yeah, yeah, good. Hey, so anybody watching that right now, listen to me. I'm gonna tell you this. What is a dad? Some somebody that leads you. It's someone that leads you. Yeah, someone who loves you unconditionally, right? Somebody who sets an example for you, and they may not be perfect. However, they can try. Yeah. Right. And they'll tell you the truth. Yeah, and and you know what? So a lot of you right now, I just want you to know, if if you're out there and maybe you're in a relationship with somebody and you know there's their their kids, dude, listen, they'll, you'll choose you as their dad too, right? What you got to do is just show them massive amounts of love, and I promise you, man, a lot of my guys that work for us, they they say, man, you're like my dad right and what that means is just a loving figure that just shows people love so i love that so rock and roll so you're at 19 years old now right and let's get into the business world so 19 years old i'm i make it to washington and at that point i've already had experience in construction i dropped out of high school in 11th grade school was not for me i did not do good in school add you know judgment criticism whatever you want to fucking say but AD, being attention deficit is a gift right and knowing what i fucking wanted 
right? I didn't want to sit at a desk. I was good at math, I was good at art. I could see things three-dimensionally. And I was always good with people. Like I had this instinct and intuition with people. And I kind of had to get that because I was a small, blonde-headed, blue-eyed kid named Shannon. I got picked on a lot. You know, so, and, and that adversity is, is one of the things that I say is contributed to where I'm at I'm today, because, man, you can't fucking hurt me now. What you say to me doesn't, I don't care. You're not gonna hurt my feelings. I got shit to do, right? So. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor, I'm gonna tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918 210 0254. 918 210 0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. 19 years old in Washington, took a job at a grocery store, met some friends, doing my thing, trying to figure shit out. And then around 21, 22 years old, I met, no, 23 years old, sorry, 23 years old, I met Sari, my wife. And then when I met her, I, I worked at a car wash, you know, I uh, lived in a small room with my buddies, you know, renting an apartment and, uh, she just knew. She knew when she met me. She she saw something in me. That she believed in you. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that was 19 years ago. And we haven't given up. Yeah, yeah. She's she's the rock. Yeah, she's the badass. So when did you get into like jujitsu and all that? I got into jujitsu when I was 31, roughly. No, 30. 30 years old. Yeah. Okay. So what makes you? And obviously today, what? Tell me what. Tell tell everybody watching what companies you own today. I own two construction companies, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu school, and. Uh, few real estate properties and, and you own you own the largest jiu-jitsu school right and it's one area. of the largest yes it has one of the most successful it, like i opened it not even two years ago and we're over 400 students already mm -hmm. most schools don't even have 400 students so let's go through obviously you own multiple businesses you're kicking ass you do well financially right you didn't graduate school but you knew that you wanted to get into the construction space some way shape or how um you love design you got in that deal you start crushing it 31 years old why'd you get into jiu-jitsu then how'd that work out I was actually addicted to drugs and pills for a little while. It, it, it's it's so unfortunate how easily that's just available, and not just on the streets, but like in the pharmaceutical, whatever. But I got addicted to the pills because I was basically having panic attacks. I was in a bad spot in my life trying to figure shit out, you know. Um, I, I had the construction company I just started, and you know, that was stressful enough as is. And it was after like around the 2008 when the economy kind of went messy and so I, I was dealing with a lot and panic attacks, call 911, think I'm having a heart attack and addicted to- You are lost. I was lost, I was fucking 140 pounds, agoraphobic, wouldn't even leave the fucking house, Andy. My, my wife, my wife, we had just gotten married and all this hit me, like my wife like, did anything. She was working and I was like, I had the construction company, it was just, we, we were trying to get it going and like, then I'm not working. You know, I'm terrified, I'm in a, I'm in a bad spot and then, she found this therapist. After multiple people have gone and seen, she, she found this therapist that basically figured out what my problem was. He helped me wean off of the pills, taught me cognitive behavior therapy. I remember saying to him, I was watching a video of two guys doing jujitsu. And I said, I was watching this video and I was thinking, oh, I'll never be able to do that. And he said, Shannon, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, you just set yourself up right there. No, now you gotta do it. Do you want me to walk through the fucking doors of the gym with you? I was like, no. No, and I did. I walked into a jiu-jitsu school. It's terrifying. My heart's beating. I'm like, short as a breath. I'm like, Fuck, what am I doing here? You know, I should just leave. You know. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm on the mats. A couple months go by, and I remember my instructor telling me, "You're gonna be really good at this. You're gifted. You're athletic. You're gonna be really good at this." And so much discipline, so much work. But like anything, when you practice, you get better at it. You get more comfortable at it. You know, it's more fun. It's easier. So many people out there have so much to offer. They don't even fucking realize it because they're torn down from the get-go. And half of it comes from their own fucking mindset. Yeah, guys, so everybody listen up for a minute. Now, obviously, um, you know, as we're talking to Shannon, right, he's saying a couple simple things here. He was on drugs, twisted, wasn't the man he needed to be for his wife. And it's very simple. You raised your hand, you got help. She went and found somebody. And by the way, I think this is a problem that people have. 
um, whenever they have issues, they don't know that they can raise their hand and they can get help. And by the way, you know, I like like making these podcasts where we talk about real life. Shit. See, everybody puts on social media all their best versions of themselves, but nobody gets out there and gets vulnerable and lets them know about the, the tough shit that people have gone through. I'm going to tell you the man I know today. OK, number one, amazing father. Right. Amazing husband kills it in business isn't afraid of anything savage when it comes to fighting and dude he literally is the most loving guy in the world you'd never know okay now see if i can check his ears out i know he's good at fighting because i look at his ears right and i, I know you don't fuck with people with ears like him right because you can tell they've been around through some, some shit but but i'm just and i said that as seriousness like look at the ear like you'll know how much wrestling he's done but i will tell you this though as i see shannon though you know, I just would never think that you were addicted to drugs, you were doing this. I, I think that that's what people don't understand is that, look, dude, when you've been through the ringer and you've been through the grind and you really messed up, like, dude, you're the most qualified. Like, like you're the greatest leader of all time when you're, you're, when you're an overcomer in your own life. And then now you can help other people overcome their stuff in their life. Because when somebody comes to work now and they got a problem, like, dude, like, this is simple for you to be able to handle their stuff because you're like, dude, man, like, this is easy, man. Like, dude, like when I was doing that and this and that, like that was hard. Like, this is easy. This is nothing. We shouldn't worry about this. And then your anxiety, like, like, like Shannon said that he had to beat his anxiety. Like maybe yours is an anxiety, but everybody's got a giant to slay. That's right. Okay. That's right. And that's like, the truth. And like, dude, like we may laugh and say, oh, anxiety, that's stupid, dude. But look, everybody has a stupid little giant they need to slay. And once you realize that it was stupid, right, and once you figured out how to handle it, um, you, you, you became dangerous. So you get in, the guy says you're going to be mat, uh, good on the mat. You, you know, obviously you start doing this more, you get addicted. The more you get better at something, you know, the more obsessed you become with it. Right. Um, so then what happened? Like, would you start going to competitions and stuff or what? I mean, how'd you end up opening your school and then having it being so successful well, and then be a teacher? I, so reverse engineer, I was able to open my school because of my credentials, right? My experience and my connection with the community. Uh, the, my business partner at the jiu-jitsu school, he had a couple other Gracie Baja jiu-jitsu schools that he owned, and he was looking for somebody to basically be the instructor and run the school. And then he heard about me, he knew about me, and he was like, oh, there's no way I can ask Shannon. He's a busy dude, right? He runs a construction company, like whatever. And, and then he made the call anyways. And I was like, Greg, yeah, it's on my fucking bucket list. It's like, this is perfect. Yeah, yeah I'll do it. Let's do it. And you love it. It makes you feel alive, right? Yes. You know, and it was a little bit of an investment. I mean, I guess it depends on what you consider a little bit, but I, I knew it was a win. It's not like, oh, it's going to cost me a hundred some thousand dollars. Dude, no, that's, are you kidding me? That's it? Like, that sounds like a lot of money, but guys, let me explain something. But the brotherhood you've created yeah. inside that gym? The connections, the value add, the money, the passive income now. I call it passive income because I don't really work. The gym is like my hobby. I just go love on people and teach them something and I meet them where they're at and I relate to them and I just help them. I build people. I have guys who come in the gym who have never fucking competed before in their life and now they're champions. That's super right? cool. Yeah. Yeah, helping other people win is a big part of winning in life. Well, that's what life is all about. I mean, let's go back to the village days. I mean, the village strive because everyone did their part to help. You know, you put in the effort, you learned, you communicate. There's no, everybody, was just doing what they were good at, doing what they felt was right, and they felt they feel that it's right because they see it. They see it. That's the judicial community. You walk in the door of the school, you leave all that shit behind. You come in there and you sharpen your fucking axe, and when you go out there, you're even more deadly at your job, just in general, with your family. There's nothing more satisfying then knowing not only can you defend your family, provide for your family, educate, and show that as an example for other families, yeah. that's God's service, man. Yeah, it is. Literally. Yeah, and see, you said, you said you were picked on a lot when you were a kid. It's funny how now you're training people to not get picked on. Remember I just told you guys, I said, whatever you don't do or whatever you don't get as a kid, like later on you end up doing that. You know what I'm saying? And dude, I'm telling you, it's the truth. Like I can take anyone in this world and I can see what they'll do right now. Right. And I, I, un I can understand why they behave. If I understand a little bit what they did as a kid and then what they're doing now. And I can tell people what their strongest and greatest deal will be. And the deal is, is that you teaching other people how to protect their family, right? Uh, clearly is protection is important to you. 
right? Because there was a time that you felt like that you couldn't protect, and now you can protect on a whole nother level. Um, obviously, like like abandonment, right? Like betrayal is probably something that's you know something that you've dealt with. I always dealt with betrayal. I used to get very mad, very quick when I felt like somebody was betraying me, right? But then I program my mind to think, oh man, you know what? I just need to make sure that I put myself around people who won't betray me. And then I started to build a circle of community and trust and, and I built a brotherhood around me and I don't have to worry about that stuff no more. You know, like, like I learned how to control a lot of this stuff. And by the way, like, dude, you can crush it, kill it, make as much money as you want. You can do all these things. The question is, how do you get there? It's easy by becoming somebody different along the way. And who? every day, yeah, who, who you, you got to be. Mm -hmm. That's and right. That's Wes Watson said it best. It's like, not how, not what do I have to do? Who, who do you have to be? Mm -hmm. That's just like any athlete, football player, basketball player. It's not like, how do I hit the ball over the fence? No, who do I have to be? Mm -hmm. Then I need to practice. That's the key. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, Jim Rohn always said, it's not about who you are, it's about who you're becoming. So if you're watching this, you know, um, tell us about your businesses right now. Like, so what do they do exactly? Construction you're in construction. So the construction, so my primary construction company is based out of Sammamish, Washington, near Seattle. And I opened that 15 years ago. And in the last five years, I've 10 x it. Like, not even fucking joking. I do residential remodeling. I, I do build additions, remodel bathrooms, kitchens, higher end, good quality work. The most, however, the most important thing for me is being able to recognize who my customer is, right? If I try to just take on any client that comes my way, I'm gonna hurt myself and I'm gonna hurt others, mm -hmm. right? Knowing when to say no, knowing who not to chase. Well, well you know your, your remodel range that you wanna do business with, right? Like you don't do thirty thousand dollar remodels. Not, not, not really. Not often. No, that would be right. that would be a one off. Like it would have to be really. Like your stuff's it. a quarter of a million at least yes. on remodels. Average jobs a quarter million. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to say that, like, guys, you got to go through a season of saying no when you want to grow. What I learned is that there was a guy who said yes to everything and then ended up taking on the wrong clients, the right ones, and then what he ended up doing is having to tell the right ones no, and then he was trying to force the the wrong ones to do what he wanted them to do, and, and he went out of business because it, 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 it wasn't it, he wasn't niched down to his audience and what he wants and I think that a lot of people like some people can sell what they have to everybody but a lot of people like you'll find the sweet spot there's a guy a guy named Cody um, Spurberg right I was just on a podcast with him yesterday and um, you know he's got a million and a half followers and I, I go and do this podcast with him in Scottsdale and his sweet spot is 18 million 18 million a month that, or that, a year. That's their goal. 18 million a year. He says he makes the most money at 18 million. Okay. So he said he went to 30 million. They actually netted more money at 18 million percentage. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, it's like my, my goal, my, my goal, I want a billion dollar company. Okay. And under 300 employees. That's what I want. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't want 3000 employees. I want 300. And um, anyway, so like you got to find your sweet spot. You got to know what you want, and then you got to build it. So you said your niches. Um, you said commercial or, or, or residential. Uh -huh. So you go into homes that need to be remodeled, and basically you make them bad, ass, bad of the bone. Do that deal. Now here's the cool thing. You said in the last five years, you said your business. You had a 15, but in the last five, you've 10 extra your business. Okay. All right. So what do you think really changed these last like five years? I mean, when my son was born. Okay. So th to show you, so your why increased. My why quadrupled, if not more. Good. When so you got a fire so. in your belly like no other. Fucking, dude, I live for something greater than myself. My wife has always been my rock and my love. And, you know, however, when my son came. Mm. Yeah, cha game changer. Game changer. And I'm never, ever, 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 ever going to do anything to jeopardize the livelihood of him. Yeah, I think, I think everybody watching this needs to understand this. That What he said is that his business, you know, 10 x when he when he when he became clear on what his why is right and by the way look dude you're literally like the why is like why would i go harder today why would i do a good job doing this why would i train why would i pay attention why would i self-invest why would i do this well the question is why you would do it is because of your why right and obviously your wife's amazing you would do it for her because you want you know, her to be proud of you but when you had your son that was a new reason to go all in and recreate and become a new man and i'm telling you I, I keep saying this to everybody once you become a coach which are all coaches once you become a leader which are all leaders once you become a leader you became a leader for your son you became a coach for your son you became the example for your son Dude, that changes everything because once you realize that you know it means something to you that somebody's watching Dude, that's when you hold yourself to a whole nother level of accountability. 
Like you would never do drugs again. No. Okay, but imagine that. But before it had might been an option, but now you're like, not a chance in hell because you never want him to see that stuff. You never want him to be around. But see, but that's, that's a level of accountability. Your why holds you accountable now. Yes. Super cool, man. So your son, and then what else? What else changed? Around the, the five-year mark. So my son was born in 2015, December 24th, Christmas Eve. And then I hustled more. I uh, also met a friend of mine who was in the construction industry who basically reached back out to me one day and said, hey, Shannon, I just want to get together and talk. And then he, he, you know, we just caught up and he was explaining what he was doing in his business and stuff. And then I started picking his brain and basically he became like a little bit of a mentor of mine. And he says, hey, if you ever need any help with anything, and he's 60 some years old, very experienced. If you ever need anything help with anything, just hit me up. And I was like, okay. And I fucking did. So I'm calling him. I'm like, hey, man, I think, I think our, my bank account is, I, I'm not getting ahead. So he's like, all right, bring me everything. And he's like, Shannon, you have to make $150,000 a year just to break even. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And I'm like, and dad, and this, that, and the other. And I was like, so I learned how to be a badass construction guy and start running a business or building a business, but I was suffering over here. So fuck, he just woke me up, woke me up to that. And then I started reading leadership books. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918 210 0254. 918 210 0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Starting immersing myself in basically business, leadership, you know, how to communicate with people, how to, you know, you know, utilize your strengths and say no to your fucking weaknesses or put them, give them to someone else. You know, building a team is very important. Without a team, like, I'm reading the book right now, Relentless, with Tim Grover. Holy fuck. Guy, like, Tim Grover, that guy is absolute fucking amazing individual. And his coaching is unimaginable. But he's very direct. Yeah, well, yeah. But you have to be. It's be, yeah. being honest. You got to be honest because everything, like physics, is real. Math is real. Life is fucking real. It's gonna come at you no matter what. Do you want to be weak or do you want to be fucking strong? Life's coming. Buckle up, motherfucker. Be ready for that. So I just immersed myself in areas that I could connect with and knew that would be better, because I could be the greatest carpenter, but I'm only one guy. Why not be the greatest builder of carpenters and supplier of opportunity? You know, satisfy my customers, satisfy my team. It's a fucking win-win. And it's not even really about the money. Like, yeah, we all got to make money, but the money is going to come. Yeah. Well, if you notice, so number one, you, incre you, you, you became crystal clear on what your why was. Okay. And then you decided to find a mentor. Okay. Mentors. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you started self-developing. And then when you started self-developing, you found a new version of you. You started to recreate. And everything changed. Like, guys, he just gave you the blueprint, okay? Like, like it's it's that easy. Like, everybody grab a pen, grab a piece of paper. Write down what your why is, okay? Now, are you ready to attack it viciously? Are you ready to go get it? Okay, if you are, you need to find a mentor. What does that mean? Find somebody who's gone where you want to go. Right. And this guy, he had some hard talks with you. Okay, what does that mean? Get ready to have hard talks, okay? Get ready to talk to somebody about, like, shit you don't want to hear. Learn to set your feelings aside when it comes to receiving the truth that's ego uh -huh. yeah get that get that ball it up and put it over here and forget about it because when you can take the truth and utilize that constructively you're going to fucking win yeah you become dangerous you're going to be dangerous yep. yeah yep i always tell people i say you're the problem you're also the solution that's right uh -huh. and that's absolutely right and the cool thing is is that being able to find someone this is truth you got to find somebody that you're willing to respect enough that when they do tell you the truth and they're and they're straight with you that you'll change you know kobe bryant you were talking about you know um tim grover but kobe bryant michael jordan the reason why they did whatever tim grover said was because they knew that he that he had their best interest and they, they told them what they wanted. They wanted to be 1% better every day. So, Co you know, Kobe Bryant talked about his NBA coach said, you know, you, you, you make 1,000 shots a day, right? But Tim Grover said, no, we're going to make 1,000 shots a day. So he didn't let him count the shots. He made him count the, the hits. Like, dude, like, there's a different standard and a different level a good coach will hold you to. You know, a lot of the times, like, you know, me and you have coached together, what I always talk about fitness yes you gotta have it's the like, body 
Yeah, but it's, yes. like, it's like we keep talking about it. Like, I need everybody to understand that this energy that's going to get us to the next level. Can I explain that a little bit? Yeah. Thank you about that. So let me say this. So first and foremost, like, without the body, you have the, no mind. The body carries a mind. The brain is what makes it possible for me to talk, to be able to see, to think, right? To, to, to push the buttons I need to push to make money. The brain receives information through the eyes, through the nose, through the ears, through the mouth, through the touch. That's how it receives information. And without a healthy body, you're not going to have a healthy mind. And, 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 and yeah, you can say there's people out there that do well with an unhealthy body, but imagine what they could fucking do with a healthy body. Imagine waking up every day and feeling so fucking good, it's not even funny. The hard part is taking this and going, let's fucking make it happen. Execution, action. That's, and, and once you get past that, it's like walking in the door to do jujitsu. That's the hard part. That's the hardest part. And then 10 years goes by, and before you know it, you're a fucking animal. And it's easy then, and it's fun, and you're helping people. Like, People who say no to being better are selfish. And a lot of people don't even realize that. They're selfish. If they say no, if they're complacent, fine. They love this, that, and the other, and they're cool with it. I don't want to be the, I don't want to be the jerk off that says you're a bad person. However, you're capable of more. You may not believe it. You may not, you may not recognize it. it may not, the opportunity it may not have been presented to you, but I promise you, you're fucking being selfish. Yeah, I always tell people there's nothing worse than dying without maxing out all your potential. Like, that's the reason why I try to get to it so quick is because I just don't know when, like, my time's up. So, like, I'm just going to act like it's up, like, tomorrow. So I just, like, go all in. I go psycho. I go obsessed. You know what I mean? And and that's the key. And, um, and, and truly, dude, like, you know, being around you, like, you're a person that, like, you're a right now person. Like, I, I've learned this about you, and this is something that I love about you, is that you want right now success. You want right now life. You want right now energy. You want right now whatever you want. So you make right now decisions. That's right. Like, like that's what I love about you. You know, my wife and me together can make decisions this quick. And what I've learned is that a lot of people, they're not yet people. Okay. There's right, right now people and not yet. Like, so, so I'm like, Hey, listen, let's go do this. And you're like, Hey man, I want to do it, but not yet. And these not yet people are the people that are literally sitting on the sidelines why right now people are playing the game. And that's what I like about you, you know what I mean? And as we do these podcasts, like I'm, I'm able to see why people have made it and, you know, and, and I love it. Like, dude, like, you know, from your dad blowing out when you were a kid and then growing up and, you know, you literally um, are, are, are trying to find your way and then you meet your wife and then she's the most amazing thing in the world but then then you let her down because you get all anxiety and you get on drugs and she probably should have left you but she didn't and and you know you're grateful people told her to leave me my own fucking friends well well it's common sense to leave you but but common sense isn't something that people that are obsessed sometimes have like sometimes it's more than that so my my point is is that these people they uh they stuck by your side, which is why now um, your wife, she handles all your business stuff. She handles everything. She's, she's my CFO. Yeah, she's the, she's the king in your business. You know what I mean? And um, it's just super cool um, that all these things, you know, y'all decided to have a kid. You know, you decided to find a mentor. You know, now you got these construction businesses. You know, now that you obviously got some real estate stuff going on the side, um, which you, you're always flipping and selling stuff. And then also you have your jiu-jitsu school, which is like, your brotherhood you know like whether that ever paid a return on any money or it didn't the coolest thing is that that's what keeps you alive man i think you coming in and see that sweat that grind that hustle hearing those mats get hit you know hearing everybody you know working together seeing people gain and get results like to me that's like that's like your ultimate fulfillment is your son is he in that yes okay see that's cool see so now he's getting a head start yes on everybody's ass you know what i'm saying yes that's super cool. But but what I always loved about you is that you're a right now person. And that's why I, I always, you know, draw towards each other. And by the way, listen, I want everybody to know that. Like, if you want to have a badass life, like, you're going to have to be a right now person, like right now, when you know something's good for you. Like, you can't go around telling people that you, I, 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 what do you want? I want this. Okay, cool. If you do this, I'll give it to you right now. Well, not yet. Mm. And that's why we keep dusting people, okay? Because people don't move as fast as you. Listen, man, there's people that are way smarter than us. Okay? <laughs> Agreed. So, yeah, and there's people that, you know, are, are way more qualified than us. But because we're prepared to do it right now, 
That's our secret. So we just gave it away on this call, man. The first two letters in the word goal is go. I learned that from a friend of mine who's a fiduciary, by the way. A great guy, family man as well. And like, when he told me that, I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, that is amazing. The first two letters in the word goal is go. So many people think that, oh, I'm going to do this one day, but not right now. I, it's got to be perfect. Well, the goal post is always fucking moving, guys. <laughs> you got to start You got to start going. You got to start practicing. You got to implement some action. Because without action, no execution. And yeah, it's one thing to have a plan, right? But it's another thing to at least have a direction. It's like, if, if, if I don't know what my plan is, well, I will get one. I'm going to start moving in a direction. I know where my strengths are. I know where my, I know where my, like, my, the people that I want to be around, I hang out in that area. And yeah, you're really good at emulating people. When you get around them, it's like, it's like one of the greatest things about getting a coach is when you get around them, you can just emulate exactly. And it's not envy, it's emulate. You just emulate what they're doing, which goes back to the law of success. Find someone who's done what you want to, what you want to do and just study them. John Maxwell said it best. Someone came to him one day and said, hey, John, I want to do what you do. And he says, okay, question is, do you want to do what I did? That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and a lot of people don't want to do that. And, and they can't overcome adversity. And I remember, as I said at the beginning of this call, I said, you're going to learn some cool stories from you. Well, what have we learned? Number one, we've learned that you're an overcomer. Okay? You've overcome drugs. You've overcome abandonment. You've overcome like, you know, like letting people down. Suffering, you... adversity, loss of life. My best friend killed himself, you know. My dad, my biological father who abandoned me many years later made amends with me and did everything, and every, anything and everything he could within his power, within his potential to stay in contact with me. And I visit him. And I, he, he told me he's sorry so many times and I love him. And he passed away. I was three hours away from his house driving to go visit him. I hadn't seen him in five years. I was on his, the way to his house three hours away a three day drive I got the call that he passed away I was almost there and then when I got there it was a mess God put me there because I needed to take care of that situation I needed to orchestrate the funeral I needed to keep everyone together I needed to take care of some finances I needed to just take action I didn't go there to miss my dad I went there to take care of him he's gone and yeah, he abandoned me, but that doesn't fucking mean I abandoned him. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I cussed. Yeah, okay. no, no, I love it. I love you getting passionate, man. And and one of the cool things about it is, um, if you'll notice with Shannon, if you'll you'll check him out, he's a normal dude just like me, and probably just like you. Now I'll tell you this: if you're able to do uncommon stuff, that's the cool shit. That's when the neat stuff comes in. What makes Shannon uncommon? Well, he plays with his heart. Okay, what does that mean? That means the guy's all heart. Okay, what we lack in skill, we own in heart. And in a world full of heartless people that everybody is like taking, nobody's giving. And you're a giver. Like you give to everybody. You know, most people wouldn't say that about their dad. You know what I'm saying? But, but you do. Why? Because you give. And by the way, listen, I told you, what you don't have as a kid, you, you, you go to give as an adult. So if anybody's watching this, man, no matter what your story is, you know, we put on these podcasts so that we can just talk for a little bit. So if you can just find one little nugget just one just even if it's this big okay then the 10 20 minutes 30 minutes that you watched it was definitely worth your time and then it makes you dangerous to go to the next level so um so shannon what if somebody wants to follow you on instagram right like where, where, how do they find you or if they want to so my instagram page connect is, with you. It's, it's pretty new i just started it a few months ago and i'm working on building content and finding some people to help me out with it because tech is not my strong suit but it. yeah it's uh so my personal page is professor shannon h and my construction page is Higginson Homes. Good. I love it. Well, guys, one thing that I'll tell you for sure is over the next two years, you'll see Shannon a lot with us. Um, he rolls with us. He's in the high in inner circle coaching program that we run with. Um, but the cool thing is, is that dude, like, when he knows that he wants something, okay, and he can see it, then he replicates it. So it's like, as we're doing crazy shit, you know, I know, Shannon, you're on another mission to do a bunch of crazy stuff. Um, your wife supports you. You're obviously taking your family with you, which is super cool. You're an example to everybody. Um, you know, a lot of people, they have no idea who they could become if they just put all the excuses to the side, right, all of them, and then just went all in. And I want to help people with that, too. That's one, of the, that's one of my goals that I'm working towards is my team – we're building a playbook, a blueprint, like you said. Like we have 270 some fucking line items on how to run a business. 
Yeah. From marketing to execution and helping people get out of their own way. Like, be ready. It's coming. You know, we're, well, we're going well, to be. Well, when, once you build your, once you build it all and you let me know, we'll, we'll have a second podcast and oh, yeah. you can give it to everybody oh, and, yeah. and they can figure out how to get in touch with you and, and yeah. do it. But, but this is day one. So the cool thing is, is that I introduce you today. We'll do a podcast in a, a year from now. The way you look, the way you talk, the way you speak, the way you work, everything will be completely different. And we'll play these two side by side. And you're going to be like, damn, man, that's crazy. I can't believe that's me. And that's the good stuff in life. So anyways, guys, recreating every day is what we live for. Um, I'm an underdog. I love overcomer stories. To me, it's everything. And Shannon, I love you, bro. Love you, buddy. Appreciate Thank you being you so here. Guys, have a kick-ass day. If you need something, reach out. But if not, we'll see you on the next video. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.